Hey there, everyone, and welcome to the monthly overview video for March of 2021. I'm Cassandra from CassandraTindall.com. So the first thing that I'm really excited to share with you is that the March skies are a lot like getting back to regular programming. January and February were a little bit stop start months in the sense that we were sort of recovering from the 2020 hangover, starting to really feel our way through after the intense energy of the grand conjunction. And while we're still in a long term process of um, starting to work through that, it's almost like we can start to at least in our everyday life get back to some level of getting on with things. Um, in some ways, 2021 was a little similar to 2020, that a lot of the astrology of the year was sort of presented to us in the first couple of months. So now we're in the third month of the year, we can now go, okay, now we kind of know what 2021 looks like. Let's get sort of on with things, so to speak. So we don't have any major stelliums, like we had last month with the pileup of planets in Aquarius. We have no planets, no planets retrograding, so no planets are reversing from our uh, perspective. We don't have any eclipses and we have no really significant um, zeitgeist shifting major planetary configurations like we had in December. So March does herald a astrological new year as well when the sun moves into Aries on the 20th of March. And so that happens across the board. So this is really uh, a reset of the energy and moving into that new celestial new year. We sort of got a little bit of a taste of that with the uh, new moon in Aquarius and the Chinese new year. Now this sort of cosmic calendar that many of um, us astrologers use um, is now renewed. So there is this real feeling now that we're over some of those introductory obstacles. We've, pers we've sort of pervaded the landscape and now we know, okay, what action uh, to, take, to take moving forward. So Aquarius, the Aquarius stellium and the month of February was very much about ideas, concepts, future vision, um, and perhaps sort of the idea of how things could be or should be being a, a real thing. And so now a lot of the things that have been perhaps in the pipeline or been a little bit stuck or stagnant or the ideas that have kind of been going through the ethers, it's this feeling now of getting back on board and getting on with it and doing something about those ideas or plans that have been sort of simmering or feeling a little, little stuck uh, since um, the old year became new. So I'm going to share my screen with you so you can see um, what the sky is doing as the month begins. So I've got this uh, chart set for the uh, Pacific time in the USA. Obviously, being in Australia, I'm sort of you know having to manage more than one time zone because uh, a lot of the people who uh, follow my work or clients of mine are not from Australia. <laughs> so I'm trying to... Uh, Think of uh, where everybody is at. So the big shift is we're moving from a very fixed energy of February and now into a mutable energy. So there is a sense of maybe, okay, like let's get some movement happening. Let's get some change happening. It's not the kind of cardinal type of change, but, you know, the mutable, you know, it has a bit more of a restless quality. It's got, compared to fixed, of course, it's a lot more movable or a, a an energy that likes to sort of get a bit more momentum behind it. I'm losing my words. I'm actually recording this video when Mercury is stationing. So uh, maybe that's why. So we have Mars in uh, mutable Gemini through until about the 24th of April. Now this is a very, you've got more air coming through, of course, um, which was a big theme of February. Mars in Gemini is a very excitable placement. It's very, uh, wants to do all the things. I kind of think a little bit of the movies Finding Nemo, and I think it might have been Dory, the blue one, um, that swim in one direction and then get sort of, oh, this direction, that direction. It was sort of like all the shiny things. 
So when Mars comes into Gemini, there is this feeling of distraction. Um, there's this sense of spreading oneself perhaps a little bit too thin um, or trying to do all the things, but maybe just sort of spinning uh, one's wheels. What I do like about this shift for Mars is that it's not forming the hard aspects against uh, Saturn now. There is a little bit more of an alliance or compliance there, maybe being able to take action towards those long-term plans or those longer-term goals that you may have set for yourself at the beginning of the year or even towards the end of last year when Saturn first moved into Aquarius. So there is a little bit... Um, of more uh, cohesion around these malefic energies. It's like, okay, I've got this goal, now I'm prepared to do the work that it takes. The thing is with uh, Mars and Gemini, you know, it is distracted. It is that kid in class that talks too much or, you know, the doing too many things. And, you know, too many cooks in the kitchen, you know, spoil the broth or, you know, having too many pots on the boil can be a feeling when, um, Mars moves into Gemini. It can add to the frenetic, uh, cerebral or in, the one, in one's head feeling as well. So it's hard to stay a little bit grounded when Mars is in Gemini. So, you know, that might be important too, if you're already starting to feel maybe a little bit mentally stressed or fatigued or overwhelmed. Um, there is this component here that once Mercury gets into Pisces, uh, that happens about the 15th. I'm just going to fast forward my days. And then Mars is looking to a very different energy to get its sort of P's and Q's from. It's Mars in Gemini will now be looking to uh, Mercury in Pisces, which is sort of um, the celestial definition of a little bit dazed and confused. Now, if you have Mercury and Pisces, of course, there are so many beautiful uh, ways that that can manifest in real life. But on paper, you know, Mercury is uh, afflicted in this position. So it can't do the clear details that it wants to do. It can't organize logistics or clear thinking or... Um, organize details um, in the way that Mercury likes linear thinking or logic and ration and reasoning. Um, Pisces is about this sort of uh, intuitive space or the ability to feel one's way through their thoughts, um, which of course Mercury is um, you know, challenged in, it, in of its own function. So Mars is looking to this sort of dazed and confused Mercury for the rest of its cycle. And so there is this idea here of, you know, when it comes to the Mars in Gemini, parts of your life feeling a little bit like skipping in the headlights, or if you're American or in other parts of the world, you might say deer in the headlights. Another analogy for this too is when I was sort of contemplating uh, this transit, is when a child learns to swim. If you've ever taken a child to swimming lessons and, and you see it uh, in backyard pools all the time, um, when, especially when the kids are little or they're not strong swimmers, is that they will you know, swim to the wall and then they get to the halfway point and then they kind of go, no, nope, not going that way. And then they go and they make the journey a lot longer for themselves. And that's where they can get into a little bit of strife or danger. So this can manifest through this Mars um, piece where you're going in one direction and then you go in another and then another and another. And then before you know it, you've spread yourself too thin, tried to do too many things and not really achieved a great deal at all. Um, and the idea here is because the intel or the information or the data that Mercury is trying to, uh, sorry, that Mars is trying to base its decision-making processes on, or its choice-making processes, or its act, you know, action, is in a position of sort of feeling vague or confused or not too sure of itself, particularly as uh, Mercury moves closer to uh, conjoin with Neptune, 
to that sort of drunken, you know, Mercury go home, catch a cab type of thing is going to sort of just um, increase and become more, uh, more so until that conjunction happens. And just looking at my notes here, so that happens at the 29th and the 30th uh, here in Australia. So it is going to be almost a pseudo Mercury retrograde vibe this year, uh, this year, sorry, this month. So, you know, moving forward, how can we use this constructively is maybe sort of base some of your action on um, your intuition as well as logic um, and maybe not let logic be the end point of the choices you make, but allow that inspiration or that intuitive knowing to guide you forward. So something else I really wanted to uh, bring up this um, month is the new moon in Pisces. So that perfects, um, I'm just going to backtrack the clock here, uh, on the 13th. So it's the 13th across all time zones. Um, and that happens at 23 degrees of Pisces. So if you have planets or uh, angles around the 23rd degree of Pisces, this is going to be a really spectacular lunation for you, in my opinion. We're moving into a four-week Jupiter lunation cycle. And so this is really, you know, when we think about new moons, we often talk about that proverbial seed planting, um, you know, the sperm and the egg or putting the seed in the dirt. And, you know, there's a period of quietness or gestation. You know, if you put a seedling in the dirt, for a while there, it doesn't appear like anything really happens at all. But underneath the surface, there's a lot going on. And the sign of Pisces is uh, energy that sometimes on the surface, it doesn't look like a lot's going on. But underneath, it, there's these you know magical waters of intrigue and mystery and compassion and uh, connectedness. So there may be an area in your life where you are wanting to plant that proverbial seed and nurture it and water it and incubate it. And you may, what's really exciting about the lunation too, is that, you know, obviously there's the Venus Neptune piece, which I'll cover briefly, but this is also the potential, the seed that you plant under this lunation will start to gain traction or grow legs or start to um, show signs of growth or fecundness once Jupiter enters Pisces on um, May 14. So just two week, uh, sorry, two months after the lunation. So just something to keep in mind if you do have some big Jupiter in Pisces plans uh, moving forward. So the Venus Neptune piece, you know, this might be about collaboration, connection, bringing uh, people or concepts or ideas together, doing something that feels like it really, um, is a heightened enjoyment or heightened pleasure. Now, because Venus from a technical standpoint is combust the sun, this also suggests that it's maybe a little bit still with the analogy of the seed being underground. It may not be the time to, you know, shout out from the mountaintops to the world what your intentions are, but it is this idea of cultivating your garden in your Pisces area of life. So I think uh, I'm excited for this uh, lunation. Maybe I'm a bit biased too because of where it falls in my, my own birth chart, but um, I think it is a bit of a precursor to what we may get in um, May, June and July when we have that first window preview of Jupiter and Pisces. Of course, there'll be more videos about that closer to the time. And then of course, Jupiter will um, come back to Pisces um, at the end of the year. Then on the 20th, we have the ingress of the sun uh, in Aries, which will then herald the um, astrological new year. So this is a really special day for astrologers. You know, it's the ingress of the of the year, um, that sort of uh, cardinal point, um, the vernal equinox and um, the astrological new year. So this is a great time, in my opinion, to really perhaps, um, you know, if you're into uh, setting intentions, manifesting, that type of thing. This is a, a lovely time to perhaps, you know, between now and the Aries new moon is usually my go-to time uh, to really um, 
sort of work the, the astrological vibes and set some intentions. So I usually do do a workshop for the uh, Aries new moon. Um, so I'll release some details about that uh, closer to the time as well. Um, and what else did I want to talk about? There's so many things this month. Um, of course, if you do want deeper insights into the astrology each month, um, you might want to consider getting inside the golden circle where I really you know, go into deep detail into what is um, happening each and every week. And there's also additional bonuses and resources and new moon groups and Facebook groups and all the things. So it's a really great learning tool, or even if you're just wanting to um, plan and guide your life a little bit more using the astrology. Okay, so there's so much I could talk about, of course, but just want to try and keep this a little bit brief, um, is that we've got the Kazemi of Mercury, uh, sorry, Venus and the Sun um, at the start of the month. So that happens at five degrees of Aries. So if you have, um, you know, any planets or angles around that five degrees of Aries, this is a real kind of reset energy there as well. So this is like a new moon for Venus. So um, start of a brand new synodic cycle where she gets infused with the heart of the sun like Mercury did um, recently. And I did a video about that. So it is sort of similar with Venus as well. You know, each planet goes through its own uh, synodic cycle with the sun. And this point describes where, you know, it's like shedding off old um, dross and then you're moving through into a, a brand new cycle. So this also indicates whenever we have the um, Cassini of Venus that we also know that there will be an upcoming uh, Venus retrograde and we will get that in December. So this is a period of renewal for Venus where she might become a little bit more empowered, where she, you know Venus um, recovers from this sort of baptism of fire, you know, in Aries. And she sort of maybe emerges a little bit as this sort of warrior princess um, vibe. So, you know, in terms of just using the Venusian archetypes, you know, it's about relationships, um, the affectionate bonds that we share with other people, the parts of life that bring us a sense of joy or happiness are undergoing a process of renewal. So you may experience that as this happens, you may become a little bit more assertive or potentially a little bit more uh, forthright in some of the Venusian topics um, of your own life or that surround the Aries house um, in your own birth chart. So as this happens, you can also see that Mars is on the application. So the dispositor of this Kazemi, so um, the sun and Venus is in Aries, which is Mars's sign, and then Mars is forming its own conjunction to the north node of the moon. So this sort of really amplifies this Kazemi aspect. There's this hunger for something uh, new or different. When I see Mars and the north node together, especially, I always get this vision of Pac-Man, you know, this little kind of headless thing that just wants to eat everything. And um, so there is this sort of, you know, friction and tension going here, this desire to maybe step out on a limb or go in a direction that may not be your status quo direction. Um, and this is all sort of happening as the moon is building to grow full in Venus's sign. So uh, on the 28th, she's going to be full um, in Libra. So this is the quintessential lunation of relationships for uh, the year. And so this might be where you start to find perhaps a little bit of balance or a little bit of, um, you know, demarcating the quality of relationships. Um, if we see here, the moon is the actual lunation is uh, trining Saturn and Venus is still in that Kazemi place with um, the sun. So there's this sort of, I guess, feeling here or this um, description here that 
the focus is moving forward. You know, Venus is going through the process of renewal and the moon is applying uh, to trine Saturn. So it is okay, let's leave the past behind and let's look at a new demarcating, some new uh, boundaries perhaps, or focusing forward, particularly as um, Mars is there with the South Node. So it's like striking a balance of sorts and coming to back to uh, what is fair and equal. And remember, remembering that equality is not always about, you know, what is, um, or, you know, I'm talking in relationships, it doesn't always have to be 50-50, it is what is equitable for you. And I think, um, you know, part of the Venus Kazemi and the Mars North Node and, and some of the tension that is sort of building around these um, energies is in order to achieve some kind of balance or some harmony or a sense of peace moving forward, first you have to agree on what the problem is and then you can then move forward uh, to a more long-term solution and finding a, a balance that works uh, for everyone involved. So that's the overview for the month. I hope that's given you just a few ideas um, as we move into this next 31 days. And as always, uh, it's great to connect with you. And if you'd like to find out more about my work and my upcoming webinar on the 12th house, all of those details are in the description below. Okay, I'll catch you next time.